Um, thanks to you for the introduction. Welcome everybody to the last talk of the day. I'm um, Navid and I'll be talking about symmetric primitives with structured secrets. This is a joint work with Hart Montgomery and Shikhar Patranabis. Let me start by considering key rotation in the cloud, which is one of the most widely used tools uh, to protect data in the cloud. So key rotation in the cloud is one of the cryptographic applications that we encounter in many scenarios. So suppose that we have some encrypted data in a cloud using symmetric key encryption, and as a security measure, we need to do key rotation in certain time intervals. A naive approach to do this would be downloading all ciphertext, re-encryption using a new key, and then uploading all ciphertext back to the cloud. However, it's easy to see that such an approach would be overwhelmingly inefficient, and it would require more resources. So fortunately, cryptographers came up with a more efficient approach, which is to use cryptographic primitives that allow us to transform a ciphertext encrypted under certain secret key SK to another ciphertext encrypted under another secret key SK prime using some auxiliary information. And as the security property, we require that the auxiliary information should not leak the underlying data. Now let's see a couple of examples of such primitives. Maybe the oldest example of such primitives is proxy re-encryption, which has been considered in both symmetric and asymmetric setting. Proxy re-encryption has been proposed by Blaise et al. in 98, and subsequent works showed improved versions of this primitive, both in terms of efficiency and security. A more recent example is updatable encryption, which has been formally defined by Bonnet et al. in 2013, and recently, we have seen variants of this primitive with relatively strong security guarantees known as post-compromise security proposed by Lehman and Tachman in 2018. In a more fundamental level, there is also a primitive called key homomorphic pseudo-random functions, which has been implicitly introduced by Naur, Pinkas, and Rangold in 99 and formally defined by BLMR13. This primitive has also further applications such as distributed PRFs and pseudo-random functions that are secure against related key attacks and also updatable encryption. This primitive is particularly interesting because it served as a building block to build other primitives such as updatable encryption. Now, a natural question to ask is, what would bring all these primitives under one umbrella? Although these primitives differ significantly in terms of constructions and proofs, these primitives have some common properties. So the first one is that these are ostensibly symmetric primitives that have a structured secret space or extra functionality. For example, in the case of key homomorphic pseudo-random function, the key space is a group which is algebraically structured. Or in the case of updatable encryption, the, the extra functionality is the capability to transform a ciphertext encrypted under a secret key to another ciphertext under some other secret key. In addition, known constructions of these primitives require relatively strong concrete public key assumptions, such as DDH, or decisional Diffie-Hellman, or learning with errors. Even the constructions in the random oracle model need uh, public key assumptions. So this may imply that public key assumptions are inherent to build these primitives. So the main question that we study in this work is uh, are public key assumptions necessary for building these primitives? The answer is yes, and here we have an overview of our results. We show that a key homomorphic weak PRF implies a certain primitive known as input homomorphic weak PRF, which has recently been shown to imply a bunch of primitives such as PIR, private information retrieval, lossy trapdoor functions, and of course, public key encryption. In addition, we show that a proxy re-encryption with UPD security implies an updatable encryption with UPD security, which in turn implies public key encryption. More specifically, we show that a proxy re-encryption with UPD security implies an updatable encryption with a strong security guarantee known as post-compromise security, and such an updatable encryption is sufficient to realize public key encryption. This means that these primitives belong to the world of asymmetric primitives. 
So the green arrows are contributions uh, from Eurocrypt 19, and the black arrows are the results from our work. In addition, we also show that certain variants of key homomorphic weak pseudo-random functions do not have post-quantum security. Now, for the rest of the talk, I'm gonna focus on this particular result, and we will see how to get a key exchange protocol, which is sufficient to realize PKE, from an exact key homomorphic weak pseudo-random function. The ideas for this construction and its proof can be used in similar ways to construct a variety of primitives such as trapdoor functions or PIR. And I'm gonna also quickly recall some of the definitions that we need for this particular result. So if you are not even familiar with uh, the weak PRF, I will show the definition. So we say that a function family is a weak PRF if an attacker cannot distinguish between samples of the form xi and fkxi's from xi's and ui's where ui's are chosen uniformly from the output space of the weak PRF. This is seemingly a weaker version of a plain pseudo-random function where an, where an attacker gets to see function evaluations on only randomly chosen inputs instead of adaptively chosen inputs. Now let's see a key homomorphic weak PRF. So we say that a weak PRF is key homomorphic if the key space and output space are groups with efficiently computable group operations. And in addition, it satisfies the key homomorphism property, which is basically given any two keys k and k prime and any input x, we have f of k plus k prime x is equal to f of k prime x times f of uh, k prime x, f of k x times f of k prime x. We usually use plus uh, for the group operation on the key space and times for the group operation on the output space. It's long been known that uh, we can build weak pseudo-random functions in a generic manner from any one-way function. But with the result of this paper, it doesn't seem likely that when we augment a weak PRF with key homomorphism, we can build it in a generic manner from any one-way function because it implies public key encryption. Now let's see a simple example of a key homomorphic weak PRF. So if G be a DDH hard group of order Q or G be a group over which DDH holds, consider the function F whose key space is ZQ and input and output, output space are both the group G. So if we define the function F as F of KH equals to H to the K, which is a single um, exponentiation of group element, it is easy to see that this is a weak PRF based on DDH assumption. In addition, it also satisfies the key homomorphism property, which is f of k plus k prime is gonna be equal to f of kh times f of k prime h, where the multiplication is the group operation over the output space. In addition, if you define the function f as f of kx equals to h of x to the k, where h is a random oracle from bit strings to the DDH hard group, so it, is, it has been shown that this is a key homomorphic PRF in the random oracle model, which uh, has been shown by uh, uh, Naur, Pinkas, and Rangel in 99. So the definition that I give you for a key homomorphic weak PRF requires that the function evaluations on sum of two keys is equal to function evaluate, to product of function evaluation on each individual key. It's also possible to consider relaxed definitions. One relaxed definition is almost or non-exact key homomorphic weak PRF, and in this definition we require that f of k plus k prime x is close to f of kx times f of k prime x instead of being equal. As a simple example, if you consider this function where the input and key space are both z, q, n, and the function is defined as the dot product or inner product of these two vectors over z, q, rounded sum modulus p, this has been shown to be uh, an, uh, a weak PRF by Banerjee, Picard, and Rosen in 2012, and it's kind of easy to see that this satisfies almost key homomorphism property, because for two different keys, S and T, F of S A plus F of T A is gonna be very close to F of S plus T A. Now before 
going into the construction of key exchange from key homomorphic weak PRF, I'm going to describe some notation that we'll use for the construction and proof. So if Y is a vector of group elements and S is a binary vector, I'm going to use YTS or STY to essentially denote the subset product over the components of Y using the binary vector S. This notation can be similarly generalized into the setting where Y is a matrix of group element. So if Y is a matrix of group element and S is a binary vector, again, YS is going to be a vector whose uh, components are rows of Y, uh, where you do the subset product over the rows of Y. For example, the first component of YS is going to be the subset product over the first row of Y. Now, to make sure that everybody is following the last talk of today, I'm going to show you a key exchange protocol from a key homomorphic weak PRF where we don't actually use the key homomorphic weak PRF. So we have some key homomorphic weak PRF f, and suppose that n is a large enough, integer, large enough integer, I'll talk about this integer later, and y is an abelian group. In addition, suppose that we also have a uniform matrix of uh, group elements. This is, a, this is a square matrix where each element of the matrix is uniformly chosen from the output group of the key homomorphic weak PRF. So we assume that Y is uh, our common random string. So we have two parties, Alice and Bob, and they want to do key exchange. So Alice samples a binary vector A, and Bob samples an n-bit string binary vector B. Alice sends A transpose Y to Bob, which is a subset product over the rows of Y. Bob sends YB to the Alice, which is a subset product over the columns of Y. It is easy to see that if Y is an abelian group, uh, Alice and Bob both compute the final secret mutually, in the sense that AT transpose YB, where A is the binary vector that belongs to Alice, is going to be equal to A transpose YB. So in the first one, we take the subset product over the vector yb using a, and in the second one, we, use, we do the subset product over the vector ATY using b. So this is a key exchange protocol, and we haven't actually used the key homomorphic weak PRF, but we are going to use it for the security. To prove the security of the construction, we are going to use uh, the pseudo-randomness or hardness of repeated subset products in the output group. So consider these two vectors x and k, where x1 through xm are uniformly chosen elements from the input space of the key homomorphic weak PRF, and k1 through kn are uniformly chosen elements from the key space. Now, we form, the, uh, we form a matrix of weak PRF outputs in the following way. So we use the key vector in each row, and we use the input vector in each column. Now, if I take a random subset product of columns of S, since F is key homomorphic, I can push the subset product of columns of S to the key space, and I can view it as a subset sum over the key space. This means that Fs, using the notation that I described in the previous slides, is going to be equal to F of k star xi's, for some k star that is equal to S1 k1 plus S2 k2 through Sn kn. So we use the key homomorphism of f to say that this is equal to f of k star xi's. Now, by the left or hash lemma, we know that if n is large enough, we can say that given k, k star is statistically indistinguishable from uniform. So this means that given the matrix f, F is, Fs is computationally indistinguishable from random. Or essentially, this means that Fs is the PR, weak PRF evaluations on a fresh random key. So we know that F is output of the weak PRF on uniform key input pairs. And in the previous slide, we saw that given uh, F, Fs is computationally indistinguishable from random. Now, we know that F itself is also uh, computationally indistinguishable from random because it's the output of uniform uh, key input pairs. 
So if we combine these together, this implies that given a uniform matrix Y, Ys is pseudo-random. So this proof technique has some other interesting implications as well. So notice that so far we have only used the fact that the number of columns of Y are large enough so that we can apply the leftover hash lemma. This means that number of rows of Y play essentially no role in the proof other than the fact that we need large enough rows to do the key exchange protocol. This means that linear equations with binary coefficients over the output space of a key homomorphic weak PRF is intractable. In particular, this means that there is no exact key homomorphic weak PRF instantiation whose output group is ZQ with plain addition. The hardness of repeated subset products or the pseudo-randomness of knapsack function is versatile enough to build a variety of cryptographic primitives such as trapdoor functions and PIR. As a simple trick, one can use binary matrices instead of binary vectors to get a certain cryptographic primitives. For example, one can define a function f where the input space for the function f is the set of L-bit strings and the key is a uniformly random square matrix where the elements of this matrix lives in the output group and S1 through SL are binary matrices. If we define a function such that uh, on this key and output outputs, on this key and input outputs Y times subset product of SI by the key homomorphic weak pseudo randomness of F, it can be shown that this is actually a strong pseudo random function. Although the hardness of repeated subset products is versatile enough to build many cryptographic primitives, it comes with so some shortcomings as well. For example, we can use quantum algorithms to determine the structure of any abelian group. This means that we can use these quantum algorithms to show that exact key homomorphic weak PRFs with abelian output groups cannot be secure against quantum attack. This means that over abelian groups, approximate, uh, approximate homomorphism is the best that we can hope for in terms of post-quantum security. The idea for the attack is uh, pretty simple. We first use the quantum algorithm to determine the structure of the out output group, which is basically decomposing the abelian group into its cyclic components. And then we use such explicit representation of the output group to solve a linear system of modular equations. Such an attack can be generalized to, to basically any primitive with exact homomorphism over abelian groups. I'm going to conclude the talk with a couple of open problems. Recall that the construction of public key encryption or key exchange from an exact key homomorphic peak PRF or, or non-exact one requires the output group to be abelian. So the question is, can we construct public key encryption from a key homomorphic weak PRF whose output group is non-abelian? Recall that uh, the pseudo-randomness of knapsack function or hardness of repeated subset products holds if the output group is non-abelian. And we, all, we only need abelian property to show the correctness of the key exchange protocol. The next open problem is constructing public key encryption from homomorphic pseudo-random generators, which is a seemingly weaker primitive. So it is easy to see that any key homomorphic weak PRF implies a homomorphic pseudo-random generator just by viewing the key of the key homomorphic weak PRF as a seed for the PRG and leaving the input or inputs as the public parameter. Finally, it's also interesting to consider improved definitions, definitions or constructions of updatable encryption that does not immediately imply public key encryption. Such an updatable encryption might be helpful to perform certain tasks, such as key rotation in cloud using purely symmetric primitives, which would be overwhelmingly inefficient. Thanks for your attention to the talk. If you have a question, please come to the microphone. I have one question. Mm -hmm. You didn't talk about uh, uh, proxy re-encryption and updated pre-encryption. Mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, key homohic uh, weak PRF case, you mm -hmm. used the uh, uh, structure of uh, yes. homohic 
homohomic property. But uh, in the case of uh, proxy reaction, I think so the rough idea to, to do that construction is that since we have indistinguishability of updates or something like indistinguishability of tokens, and it gives you the capability to transform ciphertext given some sec under some secret KSK to ciphertext under another secret KSK prime, you essentially use this capability to sort of do a key exchange protocol mm -hmm. when, where you switch the knowledge of secret key to the um, knowledge of tokens and use this to perform the public encryption or key exchange. Thanks. Thanks. More questions? No? Okay. Let's thank uh, all speakers again. <laughs> <laughs>